everybody, this is Blake here, and I just remembered I still need to do my review of Black Hat. Uh, yeah, I actually forgot that I saw this movie. <laughs> so I'm kind of embarrassed about that, and I only have about 13 minutes before I have to start getting ready for work. So this is probably going to be a very short vlog. Um, I, I could barely remember anything about Black Hat already. I saw it on Friday, and it's now Sunday, so within two days, the film has more or less completely dissipated from my mind. Uh, and that should clue you in as to how good the movie is. And to be fair, it's not bad. It's just, um, at best, I'd say it's okay. At worst, I'd say it's average, and I consider average and okay to be more or less the same thing, um, but, alright, so what do I remember about this movie? Um, the acting was good, I thought the cast members redeemed their questionably written roles, I don't want to say thinly written roles, because believe it or not, Black Hat actually does try to flesh out and develop its characters, the problem is... Black Hat doesn't really know how to flesh out or develop its characters, so the arcs seem really strange. So, for example, there's a character um, played by Viola Davis, uh, and it's revealed very late in the movie that her husband is, was a victim um, during the 9-11 attacks. Uh, okay, that's sort of an interesting backstory. But they reveal it too late, and when they reveal it, it's at a point in the movie where it only makes it more obvious what is going to happen with this character. Uh, so I felt like the film was manipulating our emotions in the worst possible way. They should have placed that much earlier in the film um, to where then we could understand where she's coming from uh, from the beginning. And it won't be quite so predictable. Uh, another character, I can't think of the actor's name, but I see him in quite a bit of stuff. Uh, he's playing the protagonist's guard. Uh, and you know, at first he's just kind of a hard ass, but uh, over time they actually do something with that character. But he's it, they just didn't go far enough with it. He He's always there, he's always standing in the background, but he doesn't speak a whole lot. Uh, he's just standing about, uh, and, you know, the, what they do with the character made me wanted to see, want to see more of him, um, so I just kind of felt that was a, a wasted opportunity. Uh, in fact, the majority of the cast, the characters in themselves can be interesting, but they often just ultimately float around in the background until the movie needs them again. So, uh, you'll want more of pretty much everybody involved, but unless it's Chris Hemsworth and his love interest, you're not going to get it. Um, speaking of which, Chris Hemsworth's character, traditional rebellious anti-hero with a heart of gold. You've seen this character done a million times before, but I like Chris Hemsworth, and therefore that made the character marginally more or marginally interesting, certainly more interesting than he would have been played by anybody else. Um, and I like the supporting cast. I, I think, you know, I like Viola Davis, uh, and I like everybody else involved. You know, this has a lot of familiar faces, if not familiar names, and they, they kept their characters at least somewhat interesting. The problem is the love story. It it sucks. It felt very superficial because it starts too early. Um, you know, Chris Hemsworth and the girl, I can't think of her name. Um, I've seen her in some stuff like Lust Caution. Not that I'd see something as sleazy as Lust Caution. <laughs> no, I, I totally watched that movie for its artistic value. <laughs> um, um, but they have a few interactions together where they're just talking, and then, like, two scenes later, they're suddenly in bed. That just makes me presume that their a relationship to each other is intended to be purely physical. But the film's trying to sell it as something deeper, like it's some great emotional bond. Um, and while it could have been, like, you know, at first, just... He finds her physically attractive, she finds him physically attractive, they hook up, and then it grows into something more throughout the course of the film. But every time they cut back to that relationship, it's the same shit. Them fooling around in bed. If they're not making love, then they're just um, cuddling and stuff like that. 
they're not learning anything new about each other. Um, there, it just it gets old really quickly, and unfortunately, that's what kills the pacing. You'll have an interesting scene where they're trying to hunt down um, this hacker, and you know they're going through all these various obstacles. You know the governments are kind of getting in the way. There's a lot of politic background politics going on. And, and I did find that stuff to be pretty compelling. Um, you know, at times it was outright suspenseful and intense, and there's some pretty cool gunfights. And, uh, uh, like, I was into it, even though I wouldn't call it a great film by any stretch of the imagination. But then they'd cut back to a much slower scene um, with the love interest, and it's just, once again, the same kind of shit where they're in bed doing something. <laughs> Uh, and it just that doesn't really make me care about their dynamic anymore. While at the same time, it's kind of boring me. And then, so it goes back and forth. Interesting scene, boring scene. Interesting scene, boring scene. Interesting scene, boring scene. And it's it's like sorry, my camera's kind of mess, getting messed up. Um, and it just fails to build on any of its momentum. Uh, so it just it, that's why it's awkwardly paced. Um, fast paced does not always mean entertaining, and slow paced does not always mean boring. But if you just do it so it's very choppily paced, um, that is going to bore me. And then the film actually gets really compelling right before the third act. There's this big shocking sequence um, that totally caught me off guard, and it was just brilliantly executed, and it leads to a really cool action sequence. Uh, and it's like it's it threw a, the filmmakers threw a monkey wrench in our expectations as well as the characters. So now I'm just like wondering, oh, what are they going to do now? And all this shit's really hit the fan. Um, and you think that's going to lead to an awesome finale? Unfortunately, it doesn't. The film almost seems to start over, where suddenly now they had to go to another country and start from scratch. Where now they're they have to investigate and try to find where the character is, uh, or the bad guy is, and then when they find the bad guy, they have to outsmart him, and then the bad guy has to kind of do his own counter plan, and then they have to overcome that, and that finally leads to the intense confrontation, which is very short and sort of anticlimactic. Uh, and of course, there's plenty of the main characters in bed cuddling stuff uh, because there wasn't already enough of that. Uh, so just like it gets really exciting only to give us blue balls and slow down even more than it ever has before <laughs> in the entire first two acts of the film. So now I'm just outright impatient. I am bored. I am fighting sleep. I'm like, come on, movie, wrap it up. I got things to do. I've worked tonight. <laughs> and this is not entertaining me. It's not really interesting me either, even though, yeah, some of the cinematography is very nice. Uh, so in the end, that's that's just the problem. There is a good film in here. Maybe even a great film. I don't know if I'd say great film. I'd say a really good film. But unfortunately, the director, Michael Mann, he just, I think, got a little too self-indulgent. He tried to bite off more than he could chew. And this story just did not justify its running time. So, yeah, it's like, it was a very odd experience, because I'd be interested one moment, bored the next, and then it got really interesting, and then it suddenly got really, really boring. Uh, so that is, that's really all I have to say. Um, in terms of his visual style, it kind of, there are some really cool shots, um, but I didn't think it fit. Primarily because I believe Michael Mann works best if he's doing either like small, more personal, low-budget movies or big-budget epics. Um, and this one's neither. It's kind of in the middle ground, so the visual style didn't really stand out to me enough. Even though it's not bad, I just figured I'd throw that in there more. Um, or just throw that in there for the sake of mentioning it. So, uh, would I recommend it? Sure, but on the small screen, I'd say this is a solid rental, especially if you have something like Netflix or you want to use Redbox. I would not go to the theaters to see this. Um, it is technically the best film that I've seen of 2015 so far, uh, but when the only movies I've seen are The Woman in Black 2 and... Um, Taken 3, then obviously it better be the best movie of 2015 so far, and of course I haven't even seen the critically acclaimed ones like 
Selma or American Sniper. Why am I watching such crap when those movies would probably please me so much more? Uh, that's just me, I guess. So I did not do a written review of this, but I did do written reviews of... Stupid cameras blurring on me. Uh, Bait, which is an, a, an Australian killer shark movie. Uh, Scream, a 1980s slasher flick. And... Ragnarok, a Norwegian monster movie, and of course I also did The Woman in Black 2 review, as well as my favorite and least favorite movies lists. Uh, I just did written versions of those. I decided I'm probably not going to do a, a video on that because I want to focus my time on critiquing the critics. Uh, hopefully production begins this week, but we'll have to see. Uh, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and that is all I've got, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I shall see you guys later. Fucking camera.